So I programmed the Fifth Symphony, your Fifth Symphony, in Washington first, and I did it at the Kennedy Center. And I'm not sure if you I knew of that performance. Because yeah, yeah. I have uh, my my sister lives there, my daughter lives there. Right. I've, I think we we might have had them there. Is that possible? Very likely. Yeah. Because they, when something shows up in Washington, they're there. Right. Right. No, and that was a, a hu- again packed house, um, but. It was the performance was the Sunday after the election, the presidential election, and and actually at Trinity the Wednesday after pre, after the presidential election, we had one of our Bach at ones where we were doing Bach motets, mm-hmm. and you know we all showed up at 10 a.m. for our rehearsal, and it was a super depressing group of <laughs> group of people, yeah. um, and then the next day I went down and had like, I think three rehearsals, and then we did your piece. And the effect of your piece on the on the people, on the performers, and on me as mm-hmm. well, um, I just thought that I had to bring it to New York as well because it hadn't been done in New York. For yeah, a that while. was a, that was a wonderful performance. Yeah, yeah. My kids were there. A lot That's of great. People were there. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So um, we we were supposed to do Stravinsky. Actually, we were in in that time slot. We had budgeted and scheduled to do all of Stravinsky's late pagan works. And I just thought, we got to cancel this and do Philip's Symphony. And mm-hmm. everyone just switched on a dime, and it was kind of an amazing, amazing sort of situation. So one of the, the I think, there's so many things I want to talk to you about. Um, but the, the work itself, um, when I look at it, to me it seems, and I know it's 20 years ago now, but it seems like one of those works like Bach's B minor Mass mm-hmm. or Beethoven's Mr. Solemnis or the Monteverdi Vespers, in which it seems like an encyclopedic collection of a lot of different techniques. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering if that was intentional on your part. Oh, I think it, to, to some degree, because we were, it was driven by the text, really. Of course. No, I, I had two uh, help, people helping me, uh, uh, Dean Morton from... The, and then Kusumita Pedersen, uh-huh. who I think she was a department uh, head of the Department of Religion at St. John's College, uh-huh. and uh, and I figured that she would take care of all the non-European parts, uh-huh. and he would, and that actually did work out that way. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, I I couldn't have done it without them. I mean, I didn't. Well, it's a stunning collection of texts. It's well, such a brilliant collection. We now here's how we 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 spent months working on it. I, we we had a we would meet, I forget whether it was maybe a Wednesday afternoon or something like that, we, and we did it for three or four months. So we had many meetings. Uh-huh. And then finally, um, I asked, I said, okay, you you, you got it. Here's a list of topics. Uh-huh. Uh, and I, I and there were, uh, as you know, the, there were the, the, the headings of each. I said, um, uh, I'd like you to submit some pieces, and they did. Uh-huh. And... Uh, Oh, what a splendid <laughs> collection. It's just incredible. And, and yeah. were you familiar with all of those no. world religions? Yeah, because, I mean, you've, of course, yeah. explored a lot between East and so, West over your lifetime. Uh, yeah, but, uh, 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 and, and I continue to do so. Um, I'm reading a book on Shinto now, which is extremely mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I've never, uh, uh, I, I never felt I had to, limit myself to one <laughs> particular uh-huh. I didn't do that right but but I got to know uh, I I worked a lot with the Tibetan community but also with uh, and and earlier with the the Hindu uh-huh. but then and I was in uh, and in Mexico in, in the last 15 years I've met many people from the uh, Nawal tradition uh-huh. uh, and that's a whole right thing. that's kind of post Symphony 5 too you yes, made it have a little addendum. Is, or something so, like that. so there's that, that continues to. Uh, I find, uh, you know, what it is. A, a very well educated, interesting people get involved with, with their 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 traditional uh, faiths, uh-huh. whatever they may be. Uh-huh. And some of them are, are are agnostic, but some of them are very devoted. Uh-huh. Uh, I remember when I was talking with Dean Morton, we got to the, uh, the uh, we got to the one uh, where we where we took the uh, uh, the Jesus uh, uh, his uh, his his big uh, what was it his, his Sermon on the Mount. Yeah. 
And and I said, we, I used it for, uh, was it suffering? No, it wasn't suffering. It was, uh, I forget the topic exactly, but, and I said, I said, you know, this is a great text. He said, well, of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, I love it. <laughs> but but apart, apart from that one outburst, uh, he and, uh, and uh, Kusumita got along extremely well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. I mean, it really is, it's just, it is such a unified whole, the text yeah. and the music together. Um, and and I love this idea, like, in the creation, how you have different versions of the different stories yeah. as we go along. So it really al almost does become a dictionary of what could be possible in a multi-faith situation well, where you take well, but, these but, wisdoms but, from all these but, religions. And interesting, uh, a Trinity, they had no problem Oh no! No, you know, no. you know, and and uh, I would say, uh, edu anyone who's educated in this area tends to be uh, as open, more inclusive, yeah. rather than Absolutely. exclusive. Absolutely, because and uh, that's the fun part. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's I think that's part of being liberally educated, right? Yeah. Is that you are open to other ideas, and you can see how they yeah. intersect. I had that. I was fortunate. I was at the University of Chicago when I was very young. I was one of those kids that went there, and uh, so I, I, I was basically a, an empty vessel that was filled up uh -huh. by, uh -huh. by this education, and uh, and that stayed with me. And and I don't think I could have written the operas I've done. I mean, Satyagraha or all these other things, and or the uh, Ramakrishna one. Uh, there's a lot of Hindu things in uh -huh, that, if, you, uh -huh. if you think about it that way, but not, not exclusively so. But uh, I was very comfortable. I went to India, and uh, I traveled around. This, this is in the late in, 60s. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It was the late. It was the early 70s, and and I was able to meet people who had marched with Gandhi. Uh -huh. Some of the That's people. That's incredible. And they were still around. Yeah, yeah. You know, so uh, and I tried. Uh, generally, I tried to be. Uh, Connected in a live in a lively way with uh -huh. someone who was connected to it, uh -huh. but that was still possible. Right, and of course it's still possible today. And in Mexico, I've had uh, extremely interesting uh, contacts uh, with not the uh, with the people who live in the mountains. Right. The uh, indigenous people of Mexico. They're bringing um, a millennial old sort yeah. of wisdom forward. Yeah, yeah, and they talk about it in very much the same way, though they're though they don't they have very little contact with the outside world. But I, I, I said That's to them, "Super one, interesting." I said, well, "What? You know, I, I wanted to know uh, how they they nurtured their, their their culture." And they said, "What?" I said, "Are you interested in sharing this with the other?" And they said, "Well." They said, actually, that's why we're, we're doing it. We're doing it to preserve it so uh -huh. that someday people will understand it. But they make no, they, they hardly leave the mountains. Right. I mean, they don't, there's, no, there's no effort to do it. Right. And they, I, I think maybe they think it's not the right, I don't know what, what, what the reason was, but uh, they, they said they absolutely, they said they were maintaining their c connection to their tradition for the good of humanity. That's very powerful. Yeah. Very powerful. But you don't see them anywhere yeah. except in the mountains. Yeah. But in their minds, they're, they're, they have preserved that. Wow. Interesting. That huh? is very powerful. Yeah. yeah. Um, let me ask you about the, the symphony. Yes. In that you, it's 20 years old now. Do you realize that? Yes. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's its 20th anniversary. We're trying to release the record on its 20th anniversary. Yeah. Yeah. But when you wrote the piece, we were sort of living in a pre-9-11, you know, sort of... The world's changed, obviously. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about your original intention with the... Because it was for the switch of the um, millennium, right? And for the Salzburg Festival? Well, it was for Salzburg. It, it was yeah. Okay, yeah. He was running it. Yeah. And he... He is a very funny guy. He had been to the Paris Opera. He had been. He was Belgian. He was from Belgium, and he had. Uh, had and he ended up in Salzburg. And then he ended up. Uh, after that, he went to uh, was the head of the Opera House in in, in Madrid. He called me up. He, he said, "Look, uh, 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 he said oh, we, the Millennium is coming up, and we'd like to commission a piece." 
And I said, oh, oh, when would you like to talk? And I said, well, whenever you want to come. I said, I'll be there next week. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I got, got on the plane and went there right, right away. I mean, you know, and uh, I didn't, I knew him a little bit. He knew me. We knew each other, but we had never worked on anything yeah, together. Yeah. And I sat down with him. He said, what do you want to do? I said, well, and I outlined that I knew what I wanted to do. And I said, this is going to be a requiem, but it's more like a, uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be take, drawing from traditions from all over the world. Mm -hmm. and, Do you consider it a, requ a requiem yourself? Well, yes, it's called it, yes, because uh, it, it... It's it, one of its parts, it, yeah. That's right. It, 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 it can be seen that way. Uh, uh, and I, I, I was drawing on, on the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Tibetan would, would be the, the, the death, the bardo, and the, re, and, mm -hmm. and, and the rebirth. Mm -hmm. So it was... But, and so I was concentrating on the death part. Mm -hmm. uh, the re and, but but uh, the Shantadevi and the other things, they do come in. With it's, it just seems so cyclical to me. It seems just yeah. like a book of life. And I explained, he said, he just listened, he said, uh, oh, what do you need? Well, I said, I need a chorus and I need a children's choir. He said, yes, we have that. You have the orchestra. I said, and I need five soloists. He said, take six. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And I took six. Yeah. Or, or was it four and I took five? I think it was four and you took five because it was five. I said at one point I said take five. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, they, uh, at the premiere, they had uh, they had translated. You know, I had done everything in English. Yeah. And they left it in English and they and they they printed it and it was handed out. I mean, it was a little mm -hmm. book that little was given to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And it was very interesting because. It's a m much older audience, mm -hmm. if you've ever been to that yeah. place. I mean, yeah. but, I mean, the average age is probably 65 right. or 70. Sure. There's no younger people there. And and people sat there with their, and it was, what, what you, everybody turned their pages together. Well, <laughs> well that's also the, the people. <laughs> they were seeing their Yes, yes. yes. You know, and they were, and, uh, and uh, I believe, uh, I think Richard told me that, at the end of it, there was a very long uh, ovation. I think it, someone said it was 15 minutes, which is hard to believe. That's a it very would not very, surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 these were older people who did not know. Right. They they knew what they were, were experiencing there at yeah. that moment. But, uh, but yeah. they they were uh, they read they were they were completely involved with it. Yeah. That was one of our best audiences. Yeah. Yeah. Um, may I ask you a more epic question? Oh, <laughs> so, um, not so much about the symphony, but um, sort of about your legacy. And um, because I, I just I referred a little bit to Monteverdi and Bach in, in this mm -hmm. way, um, but it seems to me, and, and I, you know, I'm a composer. And when I studied, um, because I'm about fifty now, mm -hmm. and when I went to school, um, my teachers were trying to stamp the Philip Glass out of me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and yeah, was... it's very interesting the the way the academicians in that time period yeah. were disdainful of many people. But yeah, well, that's uh, that's normal. That's normal. Yeah. But now, um, all the sort of downtown people that I collaborate with, um, I mean, you are the you've become the guru. And I don't mm. want to suggest that you've gone from downtown to uptown or anything cheesy like that. But um, I think it's quite possible that people think of like. You know, Monteverdi and Bach and Beethoven and Brahms and Stravinsky and Glass, you know? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's too lofty a thought. But I'm wondering how you perceive yourself in in this trajectory of, of music a, and Western a, music. I have a different idea. Yeah. Um, first of all, I start, start by saying it's very rare for a composer to outlive his generation. Mm -hmm. It almost doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. If we think of the 20th century, there are three or four people that will come to mind. There'll be Bartok and Stravinsky, and uh, but all the people that we studied with, right, forgotten. Right, right, right. You know, William Schumann. Where is Ooh, he? Yeah, exactly. Where, where is he today? Right. And, uh, I mean, and people who I had some attachment to, Virgil Thompson, who I liked him very he was much. He's a friend of mine too. Yeah. Uh, 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 and yet, uh, you don't see the work being programmed. Right. Uh, uh, and I, I try to remind people about people like uh, oh, that wonderful Brazilian composer. Oh, uh, Villalobos? Uh, yeah, Villalobos. Yeah, Villalobos, yeah. I, I, I was talking to a string quartet and I said, do you know his quartet? He said, 
no, no. I said, well, he wrote 18 on quartet. That's amazing. And yeah. I said, go listen to them. There's some really good. Yeah. But, uh, 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 and I say, if I wanted to save anyone from the, the 20th century, I would have go to him yeah. because it was so interesting. Yeah. But uh, so having said that, uh, does it apply to me? Of course it does. Yeah. Of course it does. So, uh, you know, uh, I will never, uh, I will never live past the time. I'm 82 now, so this is happening now. But will will this be happening in 20 years? I think so. <laughs> yes, and yeah. this is yeah. the delusion yeah. that we all have. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. And, and and it's not, and, and we're not. You're not alone in that. Yeah. Uh, 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 Boulez now, what happened to that body of work? Right. Well, we did one of his pieces last with with actually the flutist is right yeah. over there and it nearly killed her. But it was it was an incredible piece. So, of course yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 and what was and the, the, the Now, if I think yeah. about that period, yeah. I would say Stockhausen was more interesting. Uh -huh. But I never would have thought that at the time. Mm -hmm. Right. I thought Stockhausen was a little bit too rude, and his personality was not. Well, Boulez wasn't feeling. Mr. Nice either. What? The? Boulez wasn't Mr. Nice either. Well, <laughs> yeah, uh, we, we could talk about that too. But 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 the point is, is that uh, uh, I've seen uh, that uh, they they were in command of the new music world in the '60s and '70s and all through. The gatekeepers. And, uh, uh, yeah. They were the gatekeepers, and they disappeared. Right. No, I've seen that. Yeah. No. What am I? To, to, yeah. Am I? Uh, am I yeah. going to be the exception? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, who, yeah. Know, who knows? Uh, who knows? But who knows? I would say, frankly, it's doubtful. Right. You know what? And and and, and you say what pieces do you think will survive? I'll tell you which ones: piano music. Uh huh. Because people can play it. People can play it. And but your your incredible body of work with film and and yeah, so much yeah, of yeah. your music is captured in media. So it can easily be forgotten. Yeah. And it may not be, and I, I, I'm not predict. But I'm just saying. Let's start off with saying that uh, the it's very rare for a composer to live past this generation. Okay, it's very yeah. rare. Yeah. And uh, why should it be me, or why shouldn't it, why? Uh, maybe there's somebody around that we help. We don't even know who. Right. And don't uh, all of a sudden, we'll, it'll be just like like Bach. Yeah. Yeah. Or like Schubert. Yeah, Schubert. Yeah. I mean, so. I mean, I mean, there's so many masses and so many things that yeah. that just you never hear of his. Well, I mean, see, when I grew too. up, I, I, to me, Schubert was the cornerstone of classical music. My father lo yeah. loved Schubert, so yeah. we listened to yeah, Schubert. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, and when I found out that his uh, personal history was quite different. Mm -hmm. So so uh, let's put it this way. Uh, uh, I don't think about legacy. Okay. I really yeah. don't, yeah. and I, I, I've cured myself yeah. of that. Yeah. And I, you're a composer. Yes. I recommend that you do the same. Yes, yes. <laughs> because, first of all, uh, in, in that sense, then why not enjoy the music while you're alive? Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to enjoy it when you're dead. Right. I mean, first there of all, that. it's not actually possible yes. as far as I'm concerned. Yes. You could, think? We could, we could, you we never could, know. We could be wrong about that, too. <laughs> Interesting things can happen. Uh, uh, I was married to a wonderful painter. She died when she was 39. She had sold about two pieces. 22 years later, she has a gallery. Mm -hmm. the, right. what, the museum bought one of her paintings. Mm -hmm. I mean, she died without ever seeing any of that. Right. And I inherited her body of work. Right. So I fortunately, I got two friends and we fought a little... We made it. We. I, I need a. I said I need some people to help me with mm -hmm. this, and uh, the three of us were. Uh, we didn't even. It happened without our. our it was not intentional. Mm -hmm. Not not that we wouldn't wanted it to happen, but mm -hmm. we did do. It happened because it, it. Her work fell into the hands of people and began to show it, mm -hmm. and it didn't have anything to do with her plans. Right, right. You know, right. and now uh, we have a. We have all the. We have something like uh, 85 paintings. Right. And now people have interest. So now, oh, there they go. Yeah. yeah. So, what we're, so what we did, uh, we started a foundation under her name, and all that money will go uh, to the artists, will go to other people. Right. 
we're, we're certainly not going right. to live on our work. Right, I mean, right, right. right. Yeah. You know, but at any rate, uh, anyway, these are. So uh, I, I, I say, I'm pretty much cured of the idea. And, and your recommendation however, is for all a, of us to be cured of that. Yeah. However, yeah. there's another point. Mm -hmm. The point is, and I was talking to a, a young guy, uh, someone on the street. He said, "Oh, I like your music." I said, "Oh, you're a musician." I always say, he said, "Yes, I am," but mm -hmm. but I just he said. I, I, I just play rock and roll. It's just nothing. Right. I said, no, 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 don't yeah. say that. Yeah. I said, uh, I said, what's the most important thing is the community that we're part of, and everyone counts. Right. Don't don't think it's just the three or four people. That's not what's counting. Right. What what the continuity will be because of, of, of the of the general community and people whom you don't you don't think they're important. They are important. Uh -huh. They are important uh -huh. because without them we don't have a community. Yeah. And uh, so and, uh, so rather than thinking of looking for the handful of people that are going to survive, let's think about the thousands that are, are part of it. Right. And and make it possible for you to have an orchestra and people coming and and enjoying Without and that, yeah. forget it. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, what do you see about the the current community in New York City? I mean, you've been here you've basically well, since the late sixties, right? You've been constantly yeah, a New Yorker. Yeah, yeah since that. Uh, yeah. I because I grew to, up here, I, left I and came back. Here. So, yeah, I went. I went there in '59 or '58. I was a, And I William Schumann was president when you were there, right? Yes, that's Juilliard? right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, and and. Uh, you know, and and I saw my I saw my teachers, and there were many. Of Peter Menon was, a, was a, I saw them disappear. Mm -hmm. I said, "Oh, yeah, yeah, interesting. That's interesting. It's yeah. real." Yeah. But on the other hand, uh, what I also saw was that uh, that as a, as a, a city, uh, the community of, of artists in the city are very strong, mm -hmm. and and that is the. Uh, the future is in the hands of many more people than we yeah, imagine. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, so, I think it's a super exciting time to be in New York. Yeah, with everything that's right. That's okay, now, it's particularly, so cool. yeah. the, the, the composers, they're not even, they're in their 30s now, but yeah. a few years ago, they were in their 20s. Yeah. Like but, Nico and Paola, those people are younger yeah. than that. Yeah. And, and uh, 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 this is a very interesting group of people. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And they think so cross-disciplinary, yeah. and they don't have right. these um, creeds that they live no, with. No, and, and, and they like me or, yeah. and other people. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's cool. We're, we're, and they, they have, uh, they, uh, the sense of community is very strong mm -hmm. among them, more than my generation, yeah. which we're, we were all lifers or somehow. I don't know what th we thought we were doing, but uh, it was easy for me because I was, uh, I had the great good fortune of being uh, ignored for twenty or thirty years. Right. What, how so you could how much you fun was that? You could do whatever you wanted to. I, I did what I wanted yeah. to, yeah. and I uh, so pieces like music is, with uh, music and some uh, let's well, say music and twelve parts mm -hmm. was done in nineteen seventy four. It's being done again now. Yeah. Alter ego, alter ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they started writing and said, "Could we have some music, the early music?" And I, and I said, "What do you want that for?" Right. I said, why don't you get your own music? Yeah. I said, no, 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 we want to play music, your music. And I, I, wasn't, I finally was in Rome, and, I, and they came to see me, and they said, look, we really want to play the music. I said, play something else. And they said, no, no. We want to do that, yeah. So I said, okay. Yeah. And I gave them, and they began playing the pieces. Yeah. I mean, I think it's not only your music, but it's also your, your business model, your, well, the, you're creating an ensemble. I mean, that's well, what that's, we're all doing now. In fact, yeah. Uh, uh, what happened? The ensemble now uh, is a resident ensemble with the new school. Yeah, Manus. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are teaching there. Yeah. And one of the things they're teaching is um, how do you survive as a composer? Entrepreneurship, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 And uh, I, it, uh, it's a it's a very uh, it's happening in. Uh, my generation, John Zorn does that, uh, uh -huh. Steve, uh -huh. right, you, know, you know, the usual people. But uh, uh, I don't know how we've all survived. I've done it. I didn't. For, I mean, I, 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 I had day jobs until I was 42. Sure, yeah. So, But that was 40 years ago. Right, 
Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've had forty years, but but the, but the first I would say twelve years when no one was paying attention. Right. And even in the first, uh, uh, even uh, uh, in, in, in my fifties, it, it was an, a, a very open playing field at right. that time. But I wouldn't say you were totally ignored. I mean, Einstein on the Beach did sell out in the 70s, right, at the Met? But, but no one can explain that. No one can explain that. Yeah. <laughs> because no, my name wasn't even known that way. I mean, Bob, nor, nor was Bob Wollstone known. Right. We, well, we thought it was a bit, well, we were in Paris and we heard they were doing it. We thought it was a joke. Right. And we got off the plane and the guy, one of the people in Bob's uh, board of directors was there and he said, you're sold out. I said, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> Because I imagine it would be an empty house. Right. I mean, uh, uh, we didn't even think it was possible. Jerry uh, Jerry Robbins had a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, can I mean, see that. he he came and sold the piece. Or he knew Bob. They were friends, and uh, they were and they were looking for things to do on their Sunday night, their, their dark nights, which are mm -hmm. Sunday nights, mm -hmm. not Mondays. And uh, they started to do events, and they, they just put us in with those the other events. Right. It was an accident. I mean, kind of an accident. But most, most everything is an accident anyway. So isn't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, have you enjoyed your family life? What? Hey, your family life? Yeah, sure. Yeah, have, you have four kids. Yes, I do, and uh, uh, two of them are very good musicians. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. What do they play? Well, my, one of them is a, the, the older one is a songwriter, and his he just uh, he just uh, mixed eighteen new songs. To, you uh -huh. know, and we had an interesting talk about that. I said, "Well, you know, you're not selling that now, but you know, it doesn't mean that uh, you know. Just re look what happened. To, it was Candy Jernigan. Look what happened to her work." Uh -huh. I said, I said uh, um, uh, "We had a one conversation." About that, when he was younger, and he said, "How am I doing?" I said, "Well, let's see. You've got you've written 20 songs. I say in your lifetime you'll probably write 200 songs, and that's all you're going to get, just that." So, what do you think? He said, "That sounds great." <laughs> I said, "You don't fight." I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, and uh, he and he has been free of that. Uh, he works very hard at it. He makes his living now teaching Tai Chi and Qigong. Oh, that's wonderful. So he found yeah. a, he found some yeah. something some way to do it. Yeah, yeah. found he's very good at it. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm one of his students, by the way. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't hear that you 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 got to Tai Chi sort of late in life, right? Well, not yeah. really. It's it's it, it's, uh, it's good for older people. I didn't mean that as a negative. I just meant in your trajectory of all these things yeah. you've done. Maybe it was I found that interesting. About 15 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. But. Uh, uh, it, uh, I'm convinced that it actually doesn't matter what you do as long as you, I mean, people who go for walking people, that, that's yeah. uh, almost every, anything. Yeah. I, I think it's all, when someone says they're doing something, that sounds great. Right. right. You know, you know, at least you're not sitting watching television. Right, exactly, <laughs> eating Cheetos or something. Yeah. You know, uh, one of the lines in your symphony about, I think it's from the Tibetan Book of Dead, maybe, just that that I will never see you again. Do you remember this line? Yeah. Because I remember while I was conducting, because I just had a baby at that point, and I was weeping because I was thinking, my son's name is Talus, and I was just thinking of, there's going to be a time when I never see him again, or he never sees me. And that, those measures of that music, whenever I want to feel sad, you know, that's well, sort of so where I go. You live in New York. Yeah. So you have that, the, the city's working on you, in your favor. It's hard to leave New York and go someplace else. Yeah. You know, you, like, uh, well, my daughter is in Washington, uh, but my son, my, my uh, the, the three sons are all here. I mean, so. and you have this great relationship with them all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't, I don't see them as much as I would like to, but then again, I'm busy too. Yeah, for sure. You know, they, but they come too. I'm making them all go see King Lear. Whew. Uh. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> what strikes me is how. Um, you were such a wonder, were are such a wonderful citizen in terms of all the arts and going to all the stuff and seeing mm. colleagues work and plays and dance and and I think um, I wonder if you have a message to young artists about how to be a good citizen 
to colleagues and just to enrich oneself. Because I'm not so sure I, I that everyone I, does I just, that anymore. Uh, I, uh, the younger generation are much more connected than the older generation. Uh-huh. They're connected with each other uh-huh. and with and with uh, older older people as well. Uh, one of the things I'm well, saying. Why do you think that is? Uh, I th- I just think uh, it was the right time for that to happen. Uh-huh. I don't know why, but I have a lot of confidence in in the in uh, the, the artistic quality of that. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, uh, I I don't know why because there are people who are I mean there are plenty of generations in between them and me, mm-hmm. and uh, some of them have done very well. Absolutely. Uh, but Bang on the Can is out doing things, and yeah. I mean, not not just them, but let me just mention them because uh, uh, they they do work. They do, but. Uh, 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 this is a particularly good. Uh, uh, you know what's interesting about it, uh, uh, Julian, is that uh, um, they haven't figured out how to make a living yet. Mm-hmm. But they don't want. They are not. They don't want to be in the university. No. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and it's, yeah. it's very. And it's very. And I see what they're doing. It's very familiar mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. And then they look at me and say, "Well, look, Philip did that." Right. And I said, "Yeah, you yeah. can do it." Yeah. I, I, I said, by the way, I had day jobs when I was 42, but, yeah. you know, that, they said, well, that's only another what, 10, year, 10 years from now. I said, right. well, maybe it can happen sooner. Yeah. It does happen sooner for some mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. and they're making a living in their 30s. Uh, uh, and the, the, another thing that, we have, we, that they have gotten over completely is the idea that there is such a thing as commercial music and concert music. Right. Actually, there's just good music and it's bad music. music yeah. That's all yeah. there is. Yeah. Everything else is yeah. not... It's, yeah. it's, it's, it doesn't matter. Yeah, It's nice uh, to see all the labels being broken down. Well, I was very yeah. fortunate because I, I grew up in my father's record store and he didn't know anything about music, but he knew everything in the store. Right. Yeah. Which was everything. Which was everything, yeah. And, and he didn't say, okay, these are the good pieces, these are the bad mm-hmm. pieces. And he would bring music home to hear it. Mm-hmm. It could be Spike Jones or it could be uh, Mozart. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he ended up, he ended up, uh, you know what happened to him? He began taking, uh, he, he, there are certain records he couldn't sell. And they were modern ones. Interesting. He couldn't sell Bartok and right. Zulinski at that right. time. So he took them home to listen. He said he brought them home and said, "Kid, come on, let's listen to the music. Uh, let's see. if we can figure out what's wrong with it, I won't buy it anymore." Right. So, but he listened and listened. And of course, he ended up loving it. Right. So he became the guy in Baltimore who you went to for modern music. He would, and he would say, "Sam, come over here. Take this home." I said, bring, if you don't like it, bring it back. They never brought it back. That's amazing. <laughs> so yeah. he he was. Uh, he was promoting modern music, and then years years later, when I I came back to Baltimore, and I stopped by the store, and I just looked to see what was in the modern music and my my records. You were there, there. <laughs> but I, I I didn't ask him. Well, I didn't yeah. I didn't know how to ask him. Yeah. That, so I didn't. And I'm sorry, you had a break with him for a while. Yeah, that yeah. was uh, that was unfortunate, but yeah. but that was it had its own. That it had its own dynamic. Yeah. Uh, uh, in, in the end, uh, I, 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 the first volume, my first volume, you know, I wrote, I dedicated to him. And what I wanted, I, I wanted to write a piece that he would like. <laughs> so, what he really liked the Mendelssohn Concerto. So I said, well, Mendelssohn. Yeah. Yeah. It won't sound like Mendelssohn, but. But that, that was, was in your brain while you were. Was. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. and it became. The most popular piece, uh, that's the piece that everyone plays. Yeah, that's so interesting. I, I, hit, I hit it right on the yeah. nose, yeah, Julian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe, maybe that, 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 that would be the piece. That should, you know, when you think about it, how many pieces of, uh, oh, my God, Hindemith. Well, of any composer, right. Hindemith, yeah. what, two? Matisse de Mahler and, yeah, and, and, and some Eden, Eden Eden or something? Eden yeah, with Stravinsky. Yeah. Totally. It's a handful. No, we did his whole late period at Trinity. Can you imagine? We did Requiem Canticles and a sermon narrative and a prayer. And everyone's like, why are you doing this? And I just thought, because no one else is doing it. Well, and, and people probably discovered music. <laughs> yes, it was incredible. Yeah. yeah. It was very and, interesting. And uh, what will happen, uh, I think the future of his music will be that people will begin to f- poke around and find pieces that were forgotten. Yeah. I'm just, still be- I'm just surprisingly durable. 
you know, mm-hmm. and, but not but many pieces. Mm-hmm. Maybe the Concord and a few, uh, some of the symphony, maybe the third symphony. Is that the one that people play? Um, the easy one? Yeah. Yeah. We did the fourth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 and, and then the songs. You know what he did? Yeah. He published, self-published all the songs. Yeah. And he delivered them to uh, Juilliard, and they were given out to the students. That's pretty smart. Yeah. Yeah. And I, at one point, I had that, and I, I don't know what the hell, I think someone borrowed it and didn't, you know. No, so much noise has gone to the world as well. <laughs> it's, that, it's that book that's about, like, this big and has sort of a great yeah. cover. And, he, and I, yeah. he published it himself. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, With his insurance what, money. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to think uh, of the American, the American composers. They may be, we may be really talking about Paul Simon and people like that. I mean, for sure. And I remember I, I knew Paul pretty well, and he said, "Oh, he said no one will remember my music." I said Paul, impossible. Get out of here. Impossible. <laughs> Paul, yeah. oh, you have written. You are the you are the songwriter of our time. Yeah, yeah. And and, and you think of all the songs he wrote. Right. He said, you wrote the songs for our for our, our for our generation, right. and not just mine. Right. And I, I get off the subway the other day, and someone is on the street singing a. Out of two, uh, awful. I mean, I said, I, said, I hope Paul never, <laughs> <laughs> never walks by this corner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but he, he probably won't. But uh, 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 you have to start uh, looking. At, and fortunately, uh, what happened in my father's store, I became a, the buyer for the store when I was, uh, before I was 15. Mm-hmm. So I knew a lot about music. Right. I knew what, and I, I knew everything that was in the store, which was a lot. Uh, th- so that, that meant that I, Entered the world of music with a very different perception. Uh-huh. I, 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 I wasn't necessarily interested in. I, I wrote my first symphony number one when I was fifty-three. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. almost too late. Yeah. yeah. When was Brahms? <laughs> Brahms <laughs> was, was like forties or something. Right? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but so interesting. Yeah, but I'm up to number twelve. We mm-hmm. only got to number four. That's right. <laughs> Maybe he was smarter than, probably was smarter than me. We have one last question, and actually it's, um, I was reading uh, Kurt Vonnegut's Palm Sunday. Um, are you aware of that collection of essays? It's kind of interesting. It's, I don't know. Oh, questions. you might get a kick out of it. It's, um, it's kind of, my wife gave it to me uh, a few months ago. But there is one essay in which it's an interview, but he's interviewing himself. So he's asking the question, doing the answer, and then he gets sarcastic with himself and then sort of mean with himself. It's super interesting, and it's kind of a funny take on the old-fashioned interview. But I wonder if you have any question that you might ask yourself that's interesting. Well, I wrote that one book. I wrote two books, actually. The first one was was too serious. The second book, uh, Words Without Music, uh, it was much better because I read... Two other books I read, Memoirs of, a, of an Insomniac. Who was that? Oh, uh, the, the, the guy that went to, uh, he, he was uh, the piano player for uh, Oscar, uh, uh, Oscar Levant. Okay. He, he wrote a book called it Memoirs of an Insomniac. Okay. <laughs> that was that. And the, and the uh, uh, Marx Brothers, uh, uh, the, the one that was supposed to be deaf who wasn't deaf. Uh, not Groucho, yeah. not Harpo? Harpo? Harpo, Harpo, Harpo yeah. Yeah. I read those two books. Okay. And I read those two books. I said, oh, they're just telling stories. Yeah. I said, I can tell stories. And that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. just yeah. told stories from my life, things that I remember. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, they weren't necessarily in chronological order, but they ended up being, you know, we had a couple editors that helped. But I was, uh, no one offered to help me write it, and I didn't really need that help. I wouldn't have, because my mother, having been a librarian, had she been alive and found out I had gotten a ghostwriter, she would have killed me. Right, right, right. <laughs> I like the way your book ends, actually, with this sort of beginning thing. Yeah. It's sort of cyclical. It's yeah. like the Fifth Symphony, actually. You sort of get this, the beginning is in the end, the beginning, or is that T.S. Eliot? I don't know. Yeah. I, I thought, uh, uh, I didn't tell all the stories I could have because... Uh, uh, it would be a big book. Well, I talked to Dor- uh, I knew Doris Lessing pretty well, and she was writing her autobiography when I... Uh, I, I knew for about 30 years, I knew her a long time. And at one point she said, I'm writing my, my uh, autobiography. autobiography. And I said, how? He said, well, I'm up to vol four, but I'm not going to write it. And I understood immediately that she had written it. Right. It was in the drawer someplace. <laughs> I said, what's wrong with it? She said, well, all the people are still alive. Oh, right. 
He says, I can't do, I can't yeah. do it. I, I thought about that, and I said, you, you don't want to, the one thing you don't want to do is to to make someone really unhappy because of something you wrote. For sure. So yeah. I, I simply, I, I left some people out because I didn't, I couldn't say anything nice about right. them. Yeah. But then what I did do after the first, I took the first draft and I took, read through it, I took all the negative things out. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the book was floating in the air. That is a beautiful sentiment. Yeah. 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 There's no, there's, there's very little negativity in that book. Mm -hmm. I, I, I must have missed it. Yeah, no. It, but, yeah. but uh, and, 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 yet, and, and, and the stories were good. Yeah. And uh, people liked it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to write another one. Well, you never know. <laughs> well, I guess um, we should probably end, but I would really just like to thank you so much oh, for, your, sure. for your time and for being such an inspiration to so many people.